going to begin at tonight. And as I was putting, um, putting this together for tonight, I, um, you know, I had several different directions that I was feeling like I was supposed to go, and the Lord kept bringing me back to this, so you're not going to understand the title so much, because I don't even understand the title, but as we go, I know it'll make sense. I know why it's like it is. But anyway, the title is The Grind. Everybody say that with me. The Grind. And when we look at this and we see it, I, I want to begin uh, the first of this year, guys, because I, I know um, as well as you do that that things that come against us, it's like I was saying in the opening prayer, comes against us to steal our joy because our joy is where our strength is. I'm waiting. I see nine heads, but I, I just want to make sure you're on the same page with me. So I've learned something that if I can keep the joy, I keep my focus, I keep my strength, I keep everything. Do you follow me? I mean, it changes everything for me to, to be joyful. And I told you this, I heard Jesse Duplantis teach this years ago, and it settled something in me, because everything that happens in life does not make me happy. But it's up to me whether I let things steal my joy. And, and you know, I don't have to be happy about everything going on, but I do have to stay in the joy of the Lord, because that joy makes all the difference. So we're going to talk a little bit tonight uh, about stagnation and, and about, um, you know, how you can get you know, so dreary and so heavy and, and continuing to do the things of God, and it just seems like the joy lifts off of it, because I, I've watched people do this, guys, when we first get saved. How many of you remember? You are so on fire. I mean, you, you are like a torch. I mean, seriously, you put, put you in a room full of darkness, and you're going to burn the walls down. I mean, that's how light, that's how bright we were when we first got that salvation experience, when we first got filled with the Holy Spirit, or when we first got that, that knowledge that God cared for us, or that we were the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, that we were made holy by Jesus. You know what I'm saying? It, it wasn't something that I could just pull out of a hat and figure out how to do on my own. Not only did he make me that way, he gave me the power to live it. And to be that way, you know, and, and, and I got so excited about that when I found out I wasn't a worm. Seriously, y'all, I mean, I mean, you know, I got excited because, you know, everything I'd ever heard growing up is that you, you just old, old worm, you know, and, you know, step on me, God, and watch me squirm kind of stuff. You know, that's the way we thought God was. And, and when I got that joy inside of me and I finally started getting some understanding in the Word of God, it changed everything about me. So, you know, when we talk about stagnation, how many of you have ever, I, I mean, I like to fish. How many of you like to fish? Now, how many of you like to catch fish? How many of you just like to fish whether, they're catch, whether you're catching them or not? All right, we need to pray for y'all because fishing is fishing regardless. All right, but um, I, I fish, I love to go to ponds where a lot, a lot of people don't fish because you got opportunities that you don't have where ponds are fished out. And, but they get stagnated. Everybody say stagnated. How many of you know why ponds get stagnated? Okay, it's still water. What it is, is all the water's flowing in, but you have no water flowing out. And a lot of times in my life, when I start going through a time of stagnation, everybody say that word with me again, stagnation, it's because I'm receiving, 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 but not flowing. So I want to talk a little bit tonight about if you want to joy the Lord in your life, what you're going to end up having to do is you've got to get beyond the grind of living the Christian life. And, and we'll look at it several different ways tonight. You've got to get beyond some of the things that, that you just do on a routine basis just because it's a Christian thing to do. Didn't say it was wrong. What I'm saying, it just becomes a routine. You know, I, I, I'm one of the type, these type of people. I change my routine up. Anybody else do this? I mean, I have, I have Bible study books, you know, that I do every day. But uh, some days I don't pick up th that same book. I mean, you know, I, I read a different book. Or I might start something different. Or I might spend 15 minutes. At, right now I'm doing one that takes me through the Bible in 90 days. It's an hour of reading a day. I failed today. <laughs> do you understand? I mean, I did. But, see, we're not under the rules and regulations. You've got to understand that. You, you are going to be at a different place every day with something going on in your life. And part of you being, in, being attached to the Holy Spirit and having the Holy Spirit in you 
and being a child of God is God understands that, and there's nothing wrong with shifting sometimes to get a different view. Do you follow me? Read something. There. I read things I disagree with for two reasons. Number one is they might have something to say that I need to hear. All right, or they might be saying something I need to know how to teach against. Do you follow me? But I, I, just, don't, I just don't find people that will agree with me. I, I don't want somebody in my life that's just going to be a yes person. Oh, glory to God anyway. So if you don't have any flow, guys, if you're never putting anything out, your life is going to become stale and stagnate and you're going to have scum. And it's hard for things to live in a slimy pond. All right, and it's hard for fresh water to come out of you if you don't have flow. Everybody say flow. That I added right when I got here, so that ain't even the sermon, but it fit. All right, so Psalm 51 and verse 12 says, Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Now, I love this verse of Scripture because what it does is it puts it right where it is. The problem is not with God. God's salvation is always joyful. <laughs> You know, I mean, it always is, but sometimes we don't respond the right way and we don't handle it the right way. I love it when the Holy Spirit corrects me. No, not. I mean, the truth of the matter is, it's not fun for the Holy Spirit to tell me, hey, Rick, you missed it there. Does everybody follow me? But it's beneficial for me because now I learn and I grow in that situation and the next time I get to a point in my life where that same thing comes up, the power of the Holy Spirit helps me learn from that last time. And now, how many of you know I'm learning to keep my mouth shut a little bit more? Some of y'all are not responding good right now. I told you it was candy. I didn't say what kind. It's just sour. <laughs> so, no, Wednesday night, it's, you know, and, and so, you know, y'all know what happened with my brother. And, uh, you know, some of the responsibility of his life has been placed in my lap for, for a temporary period of time. And I believe God for favor. Everybody say favor. favor. So let me, let me tell you, y'all, you know, and I, I, sh I, I can't share it all, but I had to take him to court Monday. Okay? And, 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 um, and he didn't have the money to pay the fine, which meant I was going to have to pay the fine. You know, so the judge comes in, and this judge is, oh, he just, he just lets people know it. I mean, he just, he says, look here, if you come here today and you don't have no money, what are you doing here? You know you had a fine when you walked in the door. And if you can't pay the fine, I'll give you 30 days to pay the fine. And if you don't pay the fine in 30 days, 31st day, I'm signing a bench warrant for your arrest, and I'm going to lock you up until you pay the fine. I got a two-year contract. You stay in jail for two years. Now, how many of you know there was joy all in the courtroom? <laughs> Joy, just total joy, you know. But this man had every right, listen to this, y'all, and had every authority to do that because the people in there had broken the law. All right, so I, he told it, I don't want to see you talking. I'm the judge. If I catch you talking, you're in trouble. So I'm writing notes to my brothers. And this is what I'm saying. Keep your mouth shut. You know, and I told him, I said, be respectful. You know, I'm writing all this stuff, and Finally, it gets his turn, and he, he gets up, and, and they ask him, you know, about, you know, the judge asked me how you plead, and he told him, he said, I plead guilty. You know, and he said, but can I speak to the officer, which is what he, he was supposed to do. Well, the officer talked to him, went up in front of the judge, and then the judge looked at him and said, you from coward, right? <laughs> and my brother said, yes. And he said, they some crazy, reckless drivers in coward. He named a couple of them that I know, by the way, and I was not one. But then he looked at him and he said, how about drive a little bit more safe? He said, charges are dropped. Now think about this, y'all. Well, we believe God. Now how many of you know instantly that changed the conditions? And this is, this is what I want you to see. If you focus on just conditions for your joy, the chances are you'll never end up joyful because conditions always are subject to change. And faith can change the conditions in a heartbeat. Hey, favor can change the conditions in a heartbeat. Come on, y'all. Give me an amen. So I want, I want you to see this. He said, restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with your generous spirit. Listen to the Passion Translation. Let my passion for life be restored. Now, this is, this is where I want to go out right now, guys. What about your spiritual condition? 
You know, we understand you get taught here who you are in Christ. That should affect you every day of your life. Because you get up knowing that you are in that place, you're in that position, that should change everything for you, and you should not be stuck in a state of stagnation. You should be stuck in a, in a, in a state where you're ever flowing and ever giving and ever uh, you know, releasing out of yourself because we understand the concept that whatsoever a man, woman, or child sows, that shall they also reap. Well, what is that but flow? I mean, what is, what is that but, you know, you can get caught up in the grind of life. We're going to look at this definition in a minute to where you're in the blender and it's just, it's just cycling you round and round. And, uh, and all of a sudden you wonder what's sucking the life out of you. And it's because you're in a situation that you're not operating the way you should be operating in. Because God tells you that he will give you the power necessary to come out of that situation. Now, you may not feel it. You may not be able to see every detail of it. But let me explain it to you like this. God never fails one of his children. He never does that. So when we look at this, just keep that in mind. So we can get caught there in that place to where, man, you know, you just feel like you're in that blender and it's just constantly, constantly. You know, you're just going through. You're wondering, Lord, when am I going to be ready to get out of this thing? Well, you know, life is, is going to do everything it can to keep you stuck and to keep you powerless. And, uh, you know, I didn't go into the verse of Scripture, but Paul and Silas was in the darkest dungeon there was and began to sing praises unto God. What did they do? They got out of their situation and changed the conditions of who they were. Even though the conditions that they were in were still the same, we have a right to start praising God. We have a right to worship God. And you're going to have voices trying to tell you, you don't need to be singing right now. You should be crying and going to get a pill. And you need to look at those, those people and just let them know, no, I, I'm going to stand on the Word of God because I know the Word of God is true. It's settled forever. Do you, come on, y'all. I mean, it's settled forever. So I'm going to stand on that word, and I'm believing for that word to accomplish in my life what God says it can accomplish. And you'll realize this, guys. Once you start talking the word of God up and making it bigger than your situation, you'll begin to get a little bit of bounce in your step, and some life will begin to flow, and you'll get to a place to where you're not defeated all the time. Now you've got a spirit of victory, and how many of you know then things can change for you? So let my passion for life be restored, tasting joy in every breakthrough. Everybody say breakthrough. I mean, that, that's a wonderful word. Every breakthrough you bring to me, hold me close to you with a willing spirit that obeys whatever you say. Now let's look at this word grind. Everybody say that word with me. Because you know when you look at it, say it with me, grind. How many of you know when you look it up in a dictionary? It means all kinds of different things. I mean, it really does. So I'm not talking about the dance. Because there is a dance called the grind. And uh, I think if you want a preview of that, look at Dirty Dancing. You can find it. Watch the movie. But this is the one I want to go with. Grind means dreary, monotonous, or difficult labor. Here you go. Are you ready for this one? It means study. How many of you know an hour a day of just reading is something my mind rebels against? I'm, I'm being honest with you. An hour of reading. Now, Pam, an hour of reading a day for her is like taking a breath. I'm being honest. She will just, she'll read all the way here and all the way home. Makes for a peaceful drive. Just kidding. But she'll read. I mean, if she gets a chance to read, she can read. And it does not bother her how long she reads. Me, you put me in a room and tell me, Rick, I need you to read this book for an hour, my mind just starts making up things. I mean, I'm serious. People think I'm joking. I, I just have to do something different, and, uh, you know, and, I, and I have to study different. So if you're living your life and all your life is about is dreariness, how many of you know you need your joy restored? Come on, y'all. If it's, if it's just monotonous, I mean, if you, just, if you go through the same routine every day, I break my routine up. Does anybody else do this? I, I noticed something. How many of you have a cell phone? How many of you have your location services on your cell phone? If you got it turned on? My cell phone will tell me where I'm going. 
And it started to happen. It'll tell me um, Old Del May store is five minutes away because that's where I go and get breakfast at. So I confuse it and go a different direction and make it 10 minutes. <laughs> and then the next day, it won't tell me. Come on, y'all. And I, Yeah, you can, you can just turn it off. That's true. But I got some things on my phone that have to have location services on. And, um, you know, so cause I, know, I need to know how Pam's driving, so I keep watching her. And, uh, but anyway, you know, so I confuse it sometimes. But I realize something, guys. We're so routine that, that our phone can even tell us the next place we're going because it, it learns who we are. And see, here's the problem with that. If you just, and there's nothing wrong with routine when it comes to some things, and I understand that. But if you just get stuck doing the same thing over and over, guys, that does not bring growth. Growth comes from being sharpened a little bit by doing something different. Growth comes sometimes when you go away from doing the routine thing. Go out of your way to do something for somebody. You know, and I'm guilty of this. Can, can I just get on something? You know, I get up in the morning and I pray, God, put somebody in my path today that I can help. How many of you pray that way? Put somebody, how about pray like this? God, Put me in somebody else's way today. Tell me where you need me to go because this path may not have nobody on it today, but you might can put me on a path where somebody else is. All right, see, that, that breaks the routine a little bit. Now we're, now we're telling God, God, I'm not expecting you to bring everybody to me, but send me to where somebody is. Break, break this thing up a little. Send me to somebody that needs something different today. Are y'all with me? See, and, and this is how we get away from this thing, and this is how we get out of it. Now listen, the word routine, everybody say routine. This is habitual or mechanical performance. This is what, if we're not careful, guys, in every area of our life, we can go through that. We can, we can get to a point to where we can go through just a habitual or, or just, just a performance. You know, we just, we just stick right in there and do the same thing. And this is what actors do. Actors learn a play, and once they get that play perfected, they can just do it by routine. How many of you know faith is not routine? Because every day something's going to come up different. I know I'm preaching this different than, than some people preach it, but I just want you to bear with me for just a little bit. It's a mechanical performance of an established procedure. This is the thing. Sometimes you've got to break away from the routine do something different. You guys, read something. Read something sometimes that's out of the ordinary for you. I mean, just, just for information's sake, do it. You know, I read, Pam, Pam, she told me, there's sometimes I get books, and she'll look at me and she'll say, and she knows, you're not going to finish it. I didn't buy it to finish. I don't care whether I finish a book or not. I mean, if I read, if I read the front of a book and it, and it inspires me for something, I'll go and I'll speed read through it, and, and I'll get to what I need out of it, and then I'll, check, I'll glance through the rest of it. If it don't have anything to say to me, I mean, I, I just I set it aside. But now I went back six months later and picked that book up, and then the back said something to me a little bit different. But, but I break my routine up a little bit. I do things different. You know, I, I pray in the morning, but sometimes I wait until the afternoon. Come on, y'all. There's sometimes I lay down to pray before I go to sleep. Not because I'm lazy, because I don't want it to be a thing of routine. There's sometimes I'm instructed to pray a particular way. And then there's sometimes I just pray in the Spirit without a word of English. Come on, y'all. I mean, you know, I, I, mean, I mean, the Holy Spirit knows how to flow. And we've got to get into flow with Him because there's so much more that is out there than what we're just used to having the routine thing be done in our lives. This is what I like about studying the life of Jesus. And we may do this at some point in time. How many of you know Jesus wasn't stuck in a rut? I mean, but he, he didn't care. I mean, he, if, but, if, but he was inspired wherever he went. Well, he was Jesus. Well, yeah, so are you. We are Christ to the world today. We're supposed to be that light shining in the darkness. Drive a different way sometimes. Eat something different. I'm just saying, break your routine up just a little bit. I know I'm going into the natural here, but listen to this. 
Uh, don't, don't just establish procedures and do it that way. You are not a surgeon, you're a spirit person first. Flow in the spirit a little bit. Man, go into Walmart and pray in tongues over somebody. Pray in the spirit over somebody. Let me tell you, I've had this happen to me. I've had people pray for me, and you know, people learn after one time when they ask me to pray for them somewhere, hey, would you say a prayer for me? I do it, but I do it right there. And then a lot of times, they see me the next time, they run. <laughs> I mean, I, I had a lady walk up to me one time. We were, I think we were on our way to the beach, and she walked up to me, and we were in a little store. I, we never stopped in there. I just stopped in to get a drink. And she was in her church, in the church where we were, and she came up to me, and she said, she said, hey, would you mind praying for me? I said, absolutely, I'll pray for you. She said, good, this is what's going on. I said, fine. And I grabbed a hold of her and started praying in the middle of the store. People just went all around us. They're not going to mess with you. They're not going to mess with you when you're doing that. Be about God's business. Do something different. Give me a big amen. I know I'm going a little crazy here. Let's go to Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. This is in the message, paraphrase. And I love this. You know, I, you know so many times I, I, I was talking to someone just, this, just the other day, just Monday, I believe it was, and they was telling me about how they um, go to church every Sunday. Every Sunday I'm in church. Every Sunday I'm in church. And I happened to ask them, I said, well, what do you do on Monday? How many of you know church is good? Church is great. But what about Monday? I mean, we're not called to take a break on Monday. We're still the church on Monday. We're still the temple of the Holy Spirit on Monday. So what do you, what do, you do with the rest of your time? They, they didn't want to carry on conversation with me after that either. So listen to this. Here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your everyday ordinary life. Everybody say that with me. Everyday ordinary life. Can we do it again? Everyday ordinary life. Now one of the things that I tell you all the time is you are not supposed to be ordinary. How many of you know that? I just refuse to be just ordinary. I want to be weird. Not weird, weird, weird but spiritually weird. Do you understand? I, I want to I be that person that people come to when nobody else can pray them through what they're going through. Do you understand? I want to have a testimony of a type of person when, when they talk about me, and you need to be the same way, and when they talk about you, that, hey, nobody else could get me through this thing, but Pastor Rick was able to get me there. Do you see? Or Rick was able to get me there. Whoever it is. Because, you know, guys, sometimes we look at this stuff and we go, well, you know, God, you know, I just feel like I'm so inadequate. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. In the natural, you are. But in the spirit, you're not. And this is what happens. We get to serving God with our ordinary life and never allow the supernatural to invade our ordinary life. Because then it changes who we are. And this is what we see. We go to church on Sunday and we have a, have a good service and we come out and we're all built up. But then Monday rolls around, we got to go back with them heathen dogs we work with. Come on, y'all. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. And before long, you're talking like them, you're acting like them, you're walking. Like, and if you're not careful, you just become ordinary again. We're not called to be ordinary. And, and this is what I want you to see. We get caught up in doing the same grind over and over. Does everybody follow me? You just get caught up in doing the same thing, and you're never going to have joy when that happens. Every day is a spirit-filled adventure. And this is what we're going to deal with some on Wednesday nights. Every day should be a new spirit-filled day for you. You know, Benny Hinn, years ago, I think he put out a book that said, Good morning, Holy Spirit. Invited the Holy Spirit to be a part of your everyday ordinary life. And how many of you know it's not going to stay ordinary whenever you do that? So this is what he says I want you to do. I want you to take your everyday ordinary life. Are you ready for this, guys? You're sleeping, eating, going to work, walking around life. <laughs> Think about that, guys. You know, you're eating. I mean, glory to God. I mean, what better way to get God involved in something than to help somebody with some food? Buying somebody a meal, doing something different for them. But this is what he says. I want you to take your ordinary life. This is what he's talking about here is every, your everyday life, every, what you do every day. Hey, I get a shower every Saturday. 
No, I do not. And neither do you. But let me ask you, what do you do with your shower time? Besides wash, of course. That's a gimme. I hope that's a gimme for all of y'all. What do you do with your shower time? How many of you know it's a wonderful time for you to spend some time in worship? I mean, it's a wonderful time for you to spend some time. Nobody not going to come in there and listen to you sing. You know, my dad-in-law can't carry a tune in a bucket. I mean, if you ever heard it, he, he, used to, he used to sing in church and everybody would just go, but he didn't have the type of voice to calm it down. All he knew was, hey, I'm going to worship God. It don't matter whether I can carry a tune or not because the Bible says make a joyful noise. <laughs> Go on, y'all. Well, that don't mean it's going to be joyful to us. Do you understand? But I remember, you know, uh, you know, uh, after I started learning Pastor King, you know, and, and I had to go pick him up for something, and he was, he was taking a shower before he was getting ready to get in the car with me, and he was singing in the Spirit all the way in the back bathroom and was carrying a tune in a bucket. He was singing on key. First time I ever heard him sing on key. But most of the times when I heard him sing in the spirit, it was always on key. But in the natural, it was not. This is, what do you do with your shower time, guys? And I'm, I'm talking about this because I want to show you how to affect every day of your life. If you get up in the morning and you have to get washed to go to work, whatever that is, or washed before you go out or showered, Spend that time, whatever it is, listening to some worship music. Put the Bible on and spend that time to get yourself built up. And you won't go out dreary. You'll go out built up in the Spirit. Makes a big difference. It's an ordinary thing. Everybody say it's ordinary. How many of you know? But that's time sometimes that we waste. It says take it. Take that time. You're sleeping, you're eating, you're going to work, you're walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing that you can do for Him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. This is the thing, guys. When we get in a routine, we don't think. Do you understand? We just go through the process. Go through the process. Just go. I remember years ago I saw um, there was a lady who, there, I think it was a lady, she worked in a, in a plant where they, they built cars. She worked in a jet well car plant, and her job was to put three screws in all day long. All she did was she had, she had this power wrench, and she had three screws, and the, the thing would come up, and she'd go, y'all know what I'm talking about? Oh, can you imagine doing that for 10 hours a day? And then they work overtime. Guess what our job was? And they asked her, during the interview, they asked her, said, how do you do it without it becoming boring? She said, oh, I just learned how to do it in my sleep. So she actually built, she developed her life, such a routine where she was, she could take a nap while she was putting the screws in the car. She could actually go to sleep. Now, that's routine. Do you follow me? That's routine. Don't try that driving. Don't fall asleep while you drive. It don't work. People try that. But see, we can get in our spiritual lives that same way to where we'll read a verse of Scripture that meets our need, and then we'll read another verse of Scripture that meets our need, and we'll go out and we don't even meditate on it from that point on. Stay with me, guys, because, see, it's, it's routine Scripture. I'm asking you to do something different, to let the Holy Spirit empower your ordinary life. Let the Holy Spirit empower who you are. In other words, get up and spend some, spend some time, a little bit of time, just allowing the Holy Spirit, you invest into Him and let Him invest into you and let it change everything about your routine. Don't become so well adjusted to culture that you fit in without even thinking. Instead, everybody say instead. It says fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. Everybody say amen to that. This, this is what I'm talking about, guys. If you will learn how to, to, how to grow 
and get your ordinary life where it needs to be. I'm going to call it that. Your ordinary life where it needs to be. It'll affect every, everything. You know, the, the church, Tim Gilligan's church, he come up with this phrase years ago in his church, and he says, church days affect the rest of our days. And how many of you know, he's, he's built that into his people. He has taught that into his church. And when he starts, he says, you know what I say, and they'll all say it with him, church days affect the rest of our days. Well, how many of you know it is? It should not just be a thing where we're getting dumped in on Sunday, and then we go out unempowered on Monday. I mean, we, we need to be investing in our own maturity and in our own relationship with God and get to the point to where we can be built up all the time. What would happen, guys, if you went, if you went out of here on Sunday and then was, was full on Monday? Think about this, y'all. Still full on Tuesday and stayed full up on Wednesday and then come to church Wednesday night and we overflow. Come on, y'all. And then Thursday you're full. And then Friday, you're full. And then Saturday, you're fuller. And then Sunday, we overflow. See, this is what everybody prays for overflow. How many of you want overflow in your life? Seriously. Raise your hand if you want overflow. Well, you can only have overflow if you got flow. I mean, you're not just going to come to church and say, Lord, overflow me. I mean, you might get a flood every now and again. You know, but if you'll, if you'll stay full, if you'll stay topped off, then things can change in your life. It changes everything. Listen to what it says in Romans 12, 2. This is in the Passion Translation. Stop imitating the ideas and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. Do you get it, guys? I mean, how we think changes everything. You know, I told you this. I, I'm not a, I'm, I'm just, I, it just takes a lot for me to get negative. How many of you with me on that? But the problem with me is, if I do get negative, it takes a lot to get me positive. Because negative grows. Did you know this? You get negative about something. I mean, you get a bad opinion about somebody. I had this happen years ago. I, I don't think I ever shared who it was, but um, uh, you are recording this right now, right? Okay. <laughs> um, I went to a meeting, and, and um, I got, I, I'll be honest with you, I'm going to go ahead and do this. I, I went to a meeting where Lester Summerall was. How many of you know Lester Summerall? And, um, you know, we got there, and Pam, am I going to get in trouble for this? Probably not. And, uh, but we got to the meeting, you know, and, and, and I just... I don't know, it, you know, I had driven from Florence all the way to Loris. This is when he was in Loris at a church. And, um, you know, and, and during the service, I, I just, I just, I don't know, it just didn't, I, just didn't rub me the right way. Does anybody know what I'm saying? And, um, which I'm able to overlook some things. But then, uh, you know, the service ended and he was on the way out. And I don't know why he did it, but he come by me. And when he come, he come, come out the back with his bodyguards. And uh, he looked at me and he said, did you get anything out of this service tonight? And of course, you know, I looked at him and I said, yeah. And, you know, like, I don't want to be disrespectful. I got something. A little bit. And then he said this. He said, well, if you enjoy that, why don't you go buy every book on my table and you'll really enjoy it. And this happened, guys. This happened. Well, you know, I didn't say anything. I just prayed. I mean, you know, there's times when you just need to keep your mouth shut and pray. Well, anyway, you know, I, I, I got back in the van. It was my job to drive everybody back. And my dad-in-law was there, who was my spiritual father. And he, he looked at me and he said this to me. He said, you'll never go and hear him speak again, will you? And I said, no. And he said, I kind of figured that. And y'all, this is what we've got to be careful of. We can form an opinion based on one thing and belittle a man. This is where I missed it at, and I've matured. Everybody say maturity. Come on, y'all. This is where I matured at a little bit because later on I did listen to him, and I did pay attention and got some powerful stuff from him. Give me an amen on that. See, y'all thought I was going to stay negative. But see, this is what happens. We can let the little things in our life affect us so we can miss some of the biggest things we'll ever get just because we allow something to rub us the wrong way. 
This is why it's so important for you to take your everyday, ordinary life and present it to God. Now let me take it a step further. Didn't know I was going to do this, but let's do this. Are you ready? And when you present it to God, you need to look at Him and say, God, if there's something here that is not right, let me know now. And God is God enough, I'm going to say this, y'all, to fix you. If you will give Him permission, He will speak those things to you and let you know. And the reason why I share that story, guys, is I want you to know, I was learning things about God. I had one person that did this, and I, and I repent for this, I really do, because I let that affect me for years, and then finally the Holy Spirit got through to me and let me know that, hey, you can't base your opinion of a man's life on one thing that he does wrong. You have to allow him the, the opportunity that you have to make a mistake and grow. It says this, a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life. Everybody say beautiful life. Satisfying and perfect in his eyes. Well, here's the thing. You know, we were made new. Will you say that with me? How many of you know this? You were, you were made a, a new person in Christ. How many of you believe that? Seriously. All right, that's, that's 100%. We were made a new person in Christ. Am I right? Am I right? Well, how many of you have made a mistake since you become that new man or woman of God? So why do you think nobody else will make a mistake? All right, it's going to happen. Do you understand? It's going to happen, and, but we're responsible for keeping our eyes on God. Okay, and when we do that, then those things that happen in front of us don't stumble us and make us get to the point to where it steals our joy. The truth of the matter is, you know, I, I, and I've, I've shared this with you, but I had a pastor friend of mine he was complaining when all this stuff happened with PTL, wondering how in the world are you supposed to win people to Jesus when stuff like that happens. And I told him, I said, why wouldn't you be able to do it even more now? Because, I mean, you know, whatever took place, that's between God and them. You're just responsible for preaching the gospel. That don't belittle God. That don't steal his power. Don't rob him of anything. But it'll rob you if you don't handle the situation right. So sometimes, guys, I mean, I got to say, you got to forgive it and move on. I mean, you can stay stuck as long as you want to stay stuck, and you can stay stagnant as long as you want to stay stagnant, but if you allow the Holy Spirit to get the flow back in you, the scum will leave your life. We're supposed to be eating candy. We were made different, made new. And guys, i got to say, how many of you know even God stuff can become routine? Did you know this? Did you know I have to be very careful of this in my life? I can come up with a sermon like that. And I don't say that bragging. I'm just, my wife knows, she, I, I can be driving down the road and hear one line somewhere and have a six-week sermon and lay it out. I'm serious. I, I mean, very seldom do I struggle with a sermon. Now, let me be, get real. But I do sometimes struggle with a spirit-led sermon. Because I, I, I told God not too long ago, hey God, I'm tired of preparing these things. And then on Saturday, you changing them. <laughs> I put all that time in getting this thing ready. And he laughed at me too. See, that's just not nice. I mean, he did. He, he just, he laughed at me and he said, he said, oh Rick, you got so much to learn. And I said, yes, I do. Yes, I do, God. But don't, isn't it good we can have that relationship with God? Here's the thing, guys. I can have a sermon inside of me, and it, it may have been right up till Saturday. But then one person make a decision to come to church on Sunday. And God changed the whole thing for one person. Do you follow me? And, and that's called flow. This is, this is why, and that doesn't allow me to get stagnant. Guys, if I showed you the sermons, I have probably 50 sermons in my iPads that I have not preached. I know it. I, you get new songs and then you go, oh man, 
Come on, God, we learned the song, you know, and, and now it just don't fit. And I've had that happen. So what do you do at that point in time, guys? Do you just go with it because you put the time into it and it's a routine thing to do? Or do you allow the Holy Spirit to create a flow so that people can be healed? Or be freed or whatever the case may be. Because I can guarantee you God knows better than I do. This is why I can't let myself become just routine. You know, this is, this is why, you know, one time I, I felt called to be an evangelist. And uh, I went out to try to do evan you know, be an evangelist. And can I tell you right now, I'm almost, in two weeks, I almost preached myself sick. Because a pastor, we have to come up with a fresh word every week. An evangelist gets five sermons and goes and preaches them all year. What well, is a different anointing? So here I am, I'm having a week of meetings and I'm coming up with a sermon, different sermon every night. Well, I wasn't built to do that. And my pastor, he told me at that time, well, go try it. And he said, you'll know by the time you're done whether it's right or not. I came back exhausted. I'm being honest. I came and sit down in a chair and he looked at me and he said, so Evangelist Rick Smith, how'd it go? I said, over. It's just over. I said, I'm called to be a pastor. See, there's a different anointing. You got to flow. Everybody say it with me. You got to flow. Guys, we can't get stuck just going through the grind. Just going through the routine. Just, just becoming, just letting somebody else say, you know, you need to do this. You have to develop your own. Man, I need to say it that way. You, you got to develop your own personality in the Spirit. You just got to do it. See, I'm not called to be Kenneth Copeland. I'm not called to be Kenneth Hagen. I'm not called to be Jerry Seville. I'm not called to be Ernest Angsley. Thank God. I'm not called to be anybody else other than me. Do you follow it? But because I'm uniquely used by God. And this is, what, this is what you're called to be. Allow God to develop that in you. Let me show you the difference here. I got, I got about 14 minutes left, so let me show you this. I, I want you to understand this, guys. You know, the one of the reasons why I'm preaching this is because I, I, I'm, I'm all for people reading the Bible. How many of you know I want you to read the Bible? It's okay to read the Bible through in a year. I know people that read the Bible through every year but have no evidence that they ever read the Bible happening in their lives. So I want to see you grow. Do you follow me? I don't, I don't want to see you just going through the motions. You know, I, I want to see you grow to the point to where everybody is evident what God is doing in your life. Now, how many of you know we can have that? I'm teaching a little bit more right now than I am anything else. So just listen to this. Exodus 33, verses 9 through 11. And it came to pass when Moses entered the tabernacle that the pillar of cloud, the pillar of cloud, pillar of cloud <laughs> descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord talked with Moses. And all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the door, uh, the tabernacle door. And all the people rose and worshipped, each man in his tent door. Listen to verse 11. So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face. Everybody say face to face. Y'all, we, we, you know what we have is better than that? Do y'all realize this? The Bible says that this new covenant we have is better than what the old was. When was the last time you had a face to face with God? I mean, just to the point to where, you, you, I hate to say it, you could smell his breath. It was just that real of an encounter. Because cause mo, I, I'd venture to say most Christians today have never had a face-to-face -face encounter with God to the point to where they knew God was standing right in front of them. Most of them have to take it by faith. Every day it's a faith walk. Come on, am I telling the truth? But when's the last time you had that face-to-face -face encounter with God? I mean, to the point to where you had no problem and no way to accept that it was not God that you were standing in front of. Do you understand? And, and this is what I'm talking about. We, we got to have that. He says Moses, he spoke to Moses face-to-face -face as a man speaks to his friend, and he would return to the camp. Moses would return. But listen to this. But his servant Joshua, son of Nun. How many of you? Everybody say Joshua. It says, he did not depart from the tabernacle. Man, he was hungry. You know, he, do, do you realize this is one of those things where he was so excited about God, you know, there's different ways of looking at it. I'm going to look at it my way right now. Okay, but he was so excited about God, he would just hang around there just hoping for a little bit more. 
is hoping for a little bit more. How many of you know it affected his life? Because if you're hungry for God, God's going to show up. And I'm going to tell you what, if you hang around the tent, you're going to get affected by the glory. Do you under, I mean, if you play around the river, eventually you're going to fall in. Now, this is, this is the thing, you know, and, and I, I, I tell people this all the time. You, you can go to a church that, that believes and, and not be a believer, but eventually, if you stay long enough, God's going to get you. I mean, He is. You're going to fall in the creek. And when that happens, it's going to affect you. Now, listen to this. Go to Numbers 14 and verse 24. Numbers chapter 14 and verse 24. These are common. I preach these all the time, but they fit in right here, and I'll show you what I mean by that. It says, But my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him, has fully followed me, and I will bring him into the land where he went, and his descendants shall inherit it. Now, I'm not going to read this for you, but I want you to, to mark this and do it for yourself. But if you'll, you'll go to Numbers 14 and verses 6 through 10, you'll see that, that Joseph, the son of Nun, and Caleb were the two spies that gave the positive report. So they got affected by the presence of God. They were hungry enough for God that it affected their, are you ready for this? Everyday, ordinary life. Everyday, ordinary life was affected to the point to where they stood in front of everybody else. And I mean, Caleb even shut the people up. You know, when the Bible says he stilled the people, y'all know what he did, right? He said, shut that trap. Close that mouth. I mean, he stilled them. He shut them down and then gave the report. We are able to go in and conquer the land. Do you understand? We're more than able to do it. Yeah, there are giants there, but they're nothing to us. They're nothing to our God. But if you read the whole thing, you'll find out the people, no, oh no. They believe the bad report. And they went on in. I, I just wanted to show that. Breaking the routine you got to be careful of breaking a routine without starting a routine. I, I see this all the time in people's lives. I'm going to be a little bit real right now, guys. Um, well, I've been real all night, but anyway. I watch people change routine for routine. And I watch people change addiction for addiction. You know what I'm saying? I, I see them swap addictions, and they say they're free, but really they didn't. They just changed addiction with another addiction. And what ends up happening is they're still addicted, but they're handling it right now. But here's the problem with addiction. You can't handle it but so long before it starts handling you. All right, and I've seen this happen time and time and time again in people's lives, that they get to a point to where they swap one thing for another. And I'm, I mean, I can go into different things. I, you know, I, 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 um, I know somebody that wanted to quit smoking, okay? And, uh, and I'm not preaching against smoking, all right? But I, I don't think you should. Amen. I mean, I really don't think you should, you know, and, and, uh, but I watched them. They said, we want, I want to quit smoking. This is somebody I know personally. I know them very close. And so they switched over and they started doing vaping. All right, but the vaping that they did has nicotine in it. And the goal was to step the nicotine down. Everybody with me? But instead of stepping the nicotine down, they stepped the nicotine up. So now instead of being addicted to cigarettes... They're addicted to vaping. Do you see what I'm saying? So we swap things out sometimes. And I, I never will forget my dad. You know, he, he, he smoked for years and was one of the reasons why I started smoking was because my daddy smoked. You know, and, um, but he got lung cancer. And they had to take part of his left lung off. And when they did that, he quit smoking. But then he started dipping snuff. So I asked him one day, I said, Dad, what what you do? He said, he said, well, I couldn't do that anymore because it hurt me, but this don't hurt me. Well, <laughs> you know, it was still an addiction is what I'm trying to say. So you need to be careful. Don't swap a routine for a routine because a routine is a routine no matter how, times you, how many times you swap it. All right, develop a spirit-led life. This is what I'm telling you. Be led by the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit won't let it become a routine because you always have flow, and flow changes routine. I mean, you'll have a different flow every day you get up if you get in tune with the Holy Spirit because He knows who you're going to run into and He'll create the flow necessary for you to meet the need for the people you come into contact with because He's just that good. That's what He does. Everybody with me? Well, glory to God, anyhow. 
So don't just um, just don't do it. don't create a routine. You know, with don't break a routine with a routine. Now let me go into one way. I got just a few minutes. And how, how do you how do you stop the grind in your life? And this is an important word. Is everybody ready for this word? It's a deep word. Do you understand? And the word is grow. Everybody say it with me. Grow. You know what? You were made to mature. You were made to grow up. I refuse to grow up in some areas of my life. All right, but we have to mature spiritually to a point to where some of the things of God are not a struggle for us anymore. We'll, we're going to look at some of these on Sunday morning, so this is going to tie in a little bit with the Sunday morning service. But grow. Grow in every area of your life. Can we go to Ephesians chapter 4? We're going to start in 14 and read 14 through 16. That we should no longer be children. Look at the people around you and say, it's time for you to stop being a child. <laughs> Pam? Say it to me, baby. You know it's true. Grow up. She tells me that all the time. Oh, Rick, grow up. Just grow up. You know, I'll tell her, you know, I just don't like that. But just grow up anyway. I mean, you know, sometimes we need to hear that. You know, guys, we got to grow up. You know, you were made to grow up. Did you know this? You're not drinking milk anymore. You're not on the bottle. And I, and I don't say that to put anybody down. Eventually, you're going to have to mature in some areas of your life to the point to where you don't let what people say about you stop you from doing what God's called you to do. All right, if I, if I did that, you know, my mom and dad, when I first told them I was going to be a preacher, they looked at me and they thought I was crazy. And then I told them I was moving to West Virginia and they thought I needed medicine. I'm serious, didn't they? You, you know, you, well, you can pastor here. You don't need to go, yeah, but, but you got to understand, the f Spirit's saying, hey, you, you got to get. And that's Pam's fault. Because she said growing up, I will never pastor in West Virginia. I mean, that's what she said, didn't you, babe? Yeah, yeah I think so. You never lived there. Same difference. And, uh, you know, so my mom and dad thought I was nuts. But see, the Spirit will move you into places and move you into things that the natural does not understand. So you've got to grow up and mature at some point in time. Everybody say amen to that. It says that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine and by the trickery of men. How many of you have ever had men try to trick you? Yeah, I mean, seriously. I, I've had people try to trick me into doing certain things. I, I've, had, I've had godly men try to, try to manipulate me. You know, and, and I know how to hear from the Spirit of God. Always trust the Holy Spirit in your life. And then you won't be stepping in some of the potholes that somebody else creates for you. In the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up. Oh, I love this. Listen to this, y'all. That you may grow up in what? Oh, well, how many things does all things mean? I think all means pretty much all things. If you look that up in the Greek... It means all. Not a, I mean, seriously, no matter how you look at it. So if I can grow, if the Bible declares that I can, are you all ready for this? It's going to be an epiphany. Are you ready? Big word here. But if the Bible says that I can grow up in all things, then I can mature in all things. But I can choose not to. I was listening to Kenneth Hagin years ago, and he said somebody come to him and told him, said, you know what so-and-so is saying about you? And he said, no. And they said, well, you need to go and really listen to what so-and-so is saying about you. And he said, no. You don't need to know it all, guys. And, and can I say this too? I'm just going to go ahead and do this one. You don't need to confront it all either. You just don't need to confront it all. Come on, y'all. You know, it's not your job. Vengeance is not yours. <laughs> If you want to look at it, God knows how to settle this thing. But the important thing to remember is God wants it healed. All right, and sometimes when I take my hands off of it, it gets healed. And that's what, that's what the ultimate purpose is. Not what I think should be, what the Holy Spirit says should be. And I pray for God to give every opportunity for healing, especially somebody that hates my guts, because I'm a good guy. I mean, it happens, right? It happens. So they were, they were talking to Kenneth Hagin, you know, and he said, nope. Uh, he said, I'm just not, well, you need to go in here. Nope, not going to do it. 
And he made a statement, guys, and, you know, I've used it a lot. You know, this is one of the things that I really did pick up from him. He said, well, he said, those things don't bother me anymore. You know how he used to talk. I've been criticized by experts. It just doesn't matter. Moses, well, I heard a preacher the other day, he said when he stood before Jesus, he said he wanted to heal, hear, um, how did he say that? He said, I want to hear, well done, not medium rare. <laughs> Amen. You get your walk figured out and get it right. Let God deal with the other mess and the other people that's causing the strife and division. If you'll keep your eyes in the right place, you'll end up where you're supposed to be. Because God's just that good. He knows how to do it. Listen to what it says in verse 16. Well, let me finish verse 15. It says, that speaking the truth and love that you may grow up in all things. Everybody say all things. Into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined together, joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. This is what it says. You need to grow up in all things. And we'll get into this one next week a little bit. Learn how to let the Holy Spirit help you handle life circumstances. Guys, how many of you have some life circumstances going on? Some kids that just won't do. Or some family that just, or a wife that just, or a husband that just, you know what I'm saying? How do you handle those life circumstances? We're going to look at some of that next week and be able to tie some things in. One of the other things we're going to go into, just to give you a heads up, is personal growth. Everybody say personal growth. Is it possible, you know, I, I um, heard a preacher years ago, you can close, you can close um, your Bibles. And I heard a preacher years ago, he said, um, he said, you know, I taught, he said, I, I was teaching people in the church, and he said, I started realizing, now this is something to admit, he said, I started realizing that some of the, some of the people in the church that I was teaching began to teach things that I had taught them on a new level. And he said, in other words, he said, I was teaching them and they started outrunning me. Does everybody follow me? Now, this is what we're supposed to do. It's supposed to go from glory to glory. Nothing wrong with that. But he said, I realized something. He said, I was teaching the same things over and over and they were getting revelation from it, but I was not. So he said, what I had to do is I had to go back and restructure myself spiritually and get in that alignment that I need. He said, because I don't have to have people out running me in the spirit. Remember this, y'all. We all run the race together. Doesn't mean that everybody's going to be teaching the same thing, but what it does mean, we're all on the same track. All right? So this is what I want. I want you to grow up in God. And I know some of you are saying, well, I'm more grown than you. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. I'll be the first to admit that. But I'm going to catch you and outrun you if you don't get busy. Do you understand? Because God is doing things in people who are hungry. And it's time for us to begin. You know, we've been, we've been having this walk, this Christian walk, guys. We've been walking it long enough. Do you follow me? We've learned how to walk this Christian life. Are you with me? We learn how to walk it without it becoming exhausting. Now it's time for you to start learning how to run it. Because we're in a year where things are going to be happening fast. It's going to be happening fast and you better get ready. In the words of T.D. Jakes, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Because it's coming whether you're ready or not. And you don't want to be the one back there trying to catch up. Get out in front of this thing when you say amen. So... Get over the grind of life. Your life is not that bad. It really isn't. You got God who's for you. That means nobody can be against you. So I don't know what we got to complain about. Let's just go on with God. Will you say amen? Stand to your feet. Father, I thank you for the word, what your word teaches. God, you're going to help us outgrow some things. There's some people in here, and I know this, because I am one that I've let situations and things in my life affect my growth. And it's time for those things 
to release their hold on me. And it's time for those things to release their hold on them, on this, your body. So God, I thank you for an anointing in this place that breaks all those yokes. See, there's limitations that's been set above us, and it's time for those things to fall. It's time for us to begin to operate on a new level and a new anointing and just leave some of that stuff that's been chaining us and holding us, just leave it behind. It's time for those chains to break. It's time for them to fall. And God, part of this word is going to be encouraging us to grow beyond those circumstances in life, those things that have put those limits on us. That's what this word is about. So Holy Spirit, I give you permission in my life, and I hope everybody else, I, I pray everybody else will say this too, shake me loose. Just shake me loose from those things. Shake me loose, God, from that stuff. From the cares of what everybody else thinks. Set me free. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. If you agree with that, would you say amen? amen. Now let me